It's time for another one-off rebuild and this one I've got to say is one that breaks my heart a little bit as a Chelsea fan. We're going to be rebuilding Liverpool Football Club. That's right everyone, today we're going to be rebuilding Liverpool in Football Manager 23. A poor season last year and also some huge changes in their squad that we need to address. Liverpool are of course a side full of history. Six Champions League wins and 19 Premier Division wins. Since the 90s they've only won one title during that Covid year. You could argue they should have won more in that period but Manchester City were just as good as Liverpool were we've got FA Cups Carabao Cups this is a side with so much history and so many trophies in their cabinet but there's a big problem at Liverpool which was their midfield which wasn't great anyway and a lot of players did leave the likes of Naby Keita Oxley Chamberlain also left the club and James Milner leaving Liverpool very light in the midfield they seemingly fix that by bringing in the likes of Dominic Jobberslai and also Alexis McAllister but since then they've also had two players leave to Saudi Arabia in Fabinho and Henderson who are now going to need replacing. The squad looks light in them areas and we also need to plan for the future when the likes of Salah and Van Dijk might not be around anymore. So we've got a pretty tough job on our hands here at Liverpool, a bit unlike the other rebuilds where we're trying to get them into the Premier League, into the Champions League. With Liverpool, we want to be winning those trophies as soon as possible whilst also keeping this squad at a good level. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to smash the like button for us. It really, really does help in terms of the video's performance and it only takes a few seconds to do. So I'd appreciate anybody who can do that. And if you're in this percentage of people that aren't yet subscribed to the channel but are watching these rebuilds, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and get us closer to our our next target which is 25,000 subscribers. You guys are all legends but with that being said let's get into our first season of transfer business. Now I did use a downloadable transfer update to have the squads as accurate to real life as possible but at the time of recording that transfer update didn't include Fabinho's move away from the club so I decided to make this fair. I would offer him out, try and transfer list him to see if any clubs wanted to buy him and Manchester City came in. Although we are selling to a rival I just needed to get rid of Fabinho. They offered £50 million pounds, so we're going to imagine a world where Liverpool don't have Fabinho in their team. I also didn't really see the need of having Nat Phillips at centre-back anymore. He's been linked with moves away for a few years now and West Ham came in with a £5 million bid. I thought that was more than enough for me to want to let go so we've decided to transfer him away. Now the obvious option is to bring in Romeo Lavia straight away as our Fabinho replacement and arguably Liverpool were going to sign him even if Fabinho did not leave. However, I do have a slight issue here in that because of the way that this football manager database is set up, yes, I have used the transfer update, but this is still technically, in Romeo Lavia's eyes, his first year at Southampton. So we won't be able to sign him straight away. He's going to be playing in the championship. If he develops nicely, we might go for him, but we can't sign him in season one and I need an immediate replacement for Fabinho. So I had to look elsewhere. So in comes Florentino Luis, the Portuguese central defensive midfielder, 22 years of age. He comes in from Benfica. Fica, spent a year out on loan at Monaco, also apparently spent some time at Getafe, but when it came to profiling what we wanted, someone to be that defensive holding player in our midfield, Florentino Luis here suits it perfectly. I think he's a player with a really bright future, tackles well, and he was doing really well at Benfica alongside the likes of Enzo Fernandez before his transfer away. He's very highly thought of in real life, arguably more so than how well he's rated in Football Manager, but he's going to come straight in into our midfield as I think our best player in that deep lying midfield position. And we had some money to spare, so at the back of my mind, I'm starting to think about replacing some of the older players in their squad. Van Dijk didn't have the best of years last time out, despite still being a solid centre-back. Of course, he will be. It is Virgil van Dijk after all, but we've got him at the back with Canate, Matip and Gomez. How long all of them will be around for, I'm not sure. Canate obviously is here for the future. Joe Gomez, is he really up to the standard? Matip, is he going to be around for long enough? I wasn't sure. So I've decided to splash out by a young centre-back that Liverpool have been linked with in real life that is very talented and it's Leon's Castello Lukeba who we've signed for 17 million. He's going to come in as hopefully a long-term replacement for Van Dijk over the years. They can kind of take up each other's minutes but that's going to require Castello Lukeba here to really develop and kick on the way that the game thinks he might be able to. And it leaves our best 11 going into our first season looking like this. It's a very familiar Liverpool team. It's Alisson, Trent, Matip, Van Dijk and Robertson at the back. Thiago McAllister comes in as does Florence 
Florentino Luis here into our best 11. Salah, Luis Diaz and Diogo Jota. Obviously, we've got Nunes, we've got Gakpo, Harvey Elliott, plenty of talent on the bench as well. This is a squad that's stacked and really should be able to compete at the highest level straight away. It'll just be a case of if our new signings do well coming into the team and being able to slowly plan for a future without the likes of Van Dijk, without the likes of Robertson, Salah, these players that are getting a little bit older now. We need to do the right business, but let's see how we get on in season one. And that is a very, very good first season. Yes, we don't win the title yet again. Manchester City pip it by a three point difference, getting 89 points and just edging us to the title. But we have an FA Cup in the bag. Beating Hull in the final of all teams. I'm seeing this at the same time you guys are. Not to Aston Villa on the way. Who else? At Leicester. We didn't really have the biggest challenges in the world by the looks of it. But you know what? We're not complaining. Hull were in the final. We had to beat them. And we did exactly that. The Europa League. We beat Atalanta 3-0 to win our first European competition of this rebuild. Not a bad start at all. We had to knock out by a Leverkusen to get there. Also Sporting Club de Portugal. And Ben Fica in a 7-1 victory. Florentino Luis getting one over his old club there. Carabao Cup knocked out in the semi-final by Arsenal, but as far as first seasons go, before we really get our teeth stuck in to the rebuild, I think that's certainly a very good year. If we have a look at the overall ratings, Mo Salah, of course, was one of our best players. Gakpo having a brilliant year as well, as did Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunes, and Diogo Jota. Canate having a good season too, and that is what we want to see from our players. The players that we need to perform are doing Doing exactly that. McAllister having a good year. Trent, maybe we start to think about bringing him into the midfield. We could potentially sign a right back to cover Trent, which is something Liverpool need anyway, and maybe that will give him the freedom to move into midfield a bit more. Luke Burr is one of our worst performers this year, didn't really get too much game time. Same with Curtis Jones. Maybe these young players need to go on loan to give themselves a chance, I'm not sure. We'll see what we can do in the season two transfer window, where it's time we start thinking a little bit more about the future of the club. We'll start off with our sales. Joel Matip was getting into the last year of his deal, so we've decided to move him on. He's gone to Atletico Madrid for 25 million, played 12 times as a starter last season 27 times in total I think we can improve in that centre-back slot or at least give more chances to the likes of Lekeba I think Van Dijk and Canate should be our starting centre-back so for that reason Matip is going away to Atletico Madrid cash in on him before we let him go on the free which is something Liverpool need to be a bit better at in real life after recent events and it was exactly the same case for Thiago the Spanish midfielder another one where he did not have too long left on his deal at all so we've sold him Atletico Madrid came in 28 and a half million we bit their hands off for the 32 year old as good as he is we will take that cash and we'll reinvest it into some younger players which I feel like the side needs at this point now I mentioned I wanted some cover for Trent at right back but not just cover I wanted someone that could really push him all the way and allow Trent to maybe move in to midfield if needed and I've gone for Brandon Soppy as the player to do that the 21 year old Frenchman has four international appearances already and was playing his football out at Atalanta last year where he was very talented having came in from Udinese from Rennes now we pay 30 million pounds for him which does seem like a lot but I think he's certainly going to be worth it he's great cover in that position really good physically good going forward and can defend pretty well too can also deputize at left back if needed I think Brandon Soppy here could be one of the most important pickups we have in this rebuild purely to allow Trent to move away from that position and really push him in that right back spot should he play there and whilst Liverpool have made some great business in the last few years they are not afraid to splash the cash when they really want someone whether that's Van Dijk whether that's Allison, they know the players they want and they pay the fees to get them and we've done that here with Aurelien Schuermeni who because of the depth at Real Madrid only started eight games last year despite playing very well and for that reason Real Madrid were willing to sell him he was unhappy at the club and wanted to leave we saw him available the scouts raved about him so we have paid a huge 100 million pound fee to bring the Frenchman into our team 23 French international appearances at only the age of 23 of course scored that goal against England at the World Cup to break a lot of England fans hearts he's going to be playing in that box-to-box -box role for us I would have thought a very talented player with another 10 years left at the highest of levels yet I think he's going to be a top talent in our team and someone that's really going to elevate us to another level and that's what you'd expect from an 100 million pound player and it's not usually in these rebuilds that we're able to make these kind of huge signings but with a team like Liverpool it is certainly a possibility he now comes into our best 11 which looks like this with interestingly Harvey Elliott coming in now who's obviously been developing quite well to get into our best 11 at only the age of 20 a really bright future there and that gives us a lot of faith going forward so a few easy changes have been made to the team we didn't need to overhaul anything but we've brought in players for the present and future so hopefully that helps us out a lot don't forget to let me know in the comments who you want to see rebuilt next 
and let's see how we do in season two. And it is a brilliant result for our Liverpool team. In our second season, we pick up our first Premier League title of the rebuild, finishing eight points ahead of Man City, winning 28 of our games. Very impressive performance. And that means we have been crowned as the champions of the Premier League. Very good from us. We've also won the UEFA Super Cup, Champions League knocked out in the quarterfinals by Real, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Let's not talk about them. We didn't go all that far in those competitions. Real Madrid beating us 4-1 in an aggregate battle there. A 3-0 loss at Anfield did really hurt us. We even lost to Man City towards the end of the season. A couple of wins against Everton and Southampton at the end of the season were enough to give us a trophy and that left most Liverpool fans very happy, I'm sure. Not the best performance in the Champions League, but it is a Premier League title under our belts. Best performers, Darwin Nunes having a great season, really breaking into his own this year with 32 goals and 32 appearances. A huge increase on the numbers he got in his first season for us. Mo Salah doing well again. Harvey Elliott having a great year with 16 goals in all competitions, eight in the Prem, nine assists. This man is on fire and developing like crazy for only a 21 year old. Chouameni also had a very good first year so it looks like our signings are paying off so far. One issue we might have to deal with coming up pretty soon though is Mo Salah has one year left on his deal. Van Dijk has one year left. Also Simakas and Kelleher but really those two big names. We need to decide if we're giving them new contracts, if we're going to buy a player to replace them. Do they want a new deal at this age? Are we going to be able to offer them what they want? Do we want to give them this much money when they're already in their 30s? We've got a lot to consider in the season three transfer window. The first sale was Kostas Simikas. I mentioned he had a year left on his deal. A great left back when it comes to his attributes. But at the age of 28, I considered maybe giving him a new deal. He wasn't really interested. Then I figured Robertson's quite old and we might need a younger left back deputy to Robertson's. We decided to let the Greek international go. He has gone to Newcastle for 16 million. A good servant to the club, but it's better to sell him than to let him go for free. And we've also let Fabio Carvalho go. This might upset some people who thought he had potential. I'm not saying he doesn't, but he didn't do too great at Leipzig on loan. Then only played one start for his last season, nine appearances off the bench. I just know I'm not going to be able to give him the game time he wants to develop. And as far as football manager goes, I just don't think he's quite there in terms of having that potential to be a star at Liverpool. So we've let him go to Sporting Club de Portugal for 13.25 million. He's Portuguese as well, so it all works out nicely. And we pretty much double the the investment that we originally paid for him. But now we get to the incomings and this is one that I think is really suited to the kind of rebuild we normally do on the channel, signing young players to help rebuild a club. Well, in this case, we're kind of doing that by thinking about the future. We mentioned Salah was getting towards the end of his deal. I actually have decided to extend his deal for a little bit. He's still at such a high level Salah, so he wants to keep him around. But even with that being said, it's time we start thinking about a player to come in for him over a long period of time. And Rooney Bargi, the Swedish international, is going to be that man, 18 years of age, coming in from FC Copenhagen. I have a lot of faith that he could be eventually our Salah replacement. He's got the ability to do so. He just needs to develop. He's got a few years to do it yet while Salah is still here. Hopefully as time goes on, he can take up some of Salah's game time and become a real star on that right flank. Simicass's replacement, I mentioned I wanted a younger left back, so we've gone for Fabinho Parisi, a younger player to deputise Robertson in that left back spot. We're paying 34 million for all the lad from Fiorentina. He's got a lot of ability, a lot of potential too. Very quick, very agile, a lot of pace for this man. He's good going forward and he can also defend really well too. It's not like he's good going forward and that's it. So he's got a lot going for his game, Parisi, and I think he could be a very good deputy for Robertson, maybe even fill his shoes one day. Two Italian caps as well. This is a man with a very bright future. And speaking of bright futures, I mentioned we'd spend the money on the right players when they came about, and we have done it here, spending a huge £75 million on a young, what is he now, 20 years of age, something like that? Yes, 20-year-old Giorgio Scalvini from Atalanta, who has been great for them for a couple of seasons. We're trying to think of a future without Virgil van Dijk, and we need that top-level elite centre-back at the back, and Scalvini could become that, but arguably is already that kind of centre-back at only the age of 20. Six foot four, 11 international appearances for Italy. He is going to be a mainstay for the national team. Can play defensive midfield if needed too. Lots of ability all around. Good in the air. Good strength. Quick. Decent passing ability. Good defending ability. This man's got the lot and I really do think he'll grow up to be like a Liverpool captain in this save. I think he's got that in him. And he also comes straight in into our best 11 to partner Van Dijk at the back. Trent, Robbo and Alisson are all still in there. Our midfield, apparently our best midfield now, is Florentino Luis, Harvey Elliott and Chouameni. Salah, Diaz and Nunes finish off our front line. Nunes really starting to come into his own last season, as we mentioned. Hopefully, that will continue this year as we try and push for another Premier League title, maybe also a Champions League. We've won the Europa
Europa League already, but we need to go out and try and win the biggest competition of all. So let's see what we can do in season three. And it's another Premier League title win, as well as the Community Shield, for as much as that counts. Carabao Cup, very disappointing, losing to Middlesbrough. FA Cup, we lost to Arsenal in the final, which is disappointing. And the Champions League, we're not in the final. Where did we get knocked out? Did we make it to the semis? We did, and Real Madrid knocked us out with a 4-2 win. I feel like they knocked us out the other year as well, right? Real Madrid have really got our number right here. It looks like they're going to go on to potentially win another Champions League, but we did win that Premier League title. Four points more than Arsenal, way ahead of Man City. They seem to have fallen off this year. Are they still managed by Pep? They're not. Their manager is Brian Barry Murphy. He's a caretaker. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. But it looks like Pep is out the door. And maybe that's the reason that they didn't do so well. But some of our players have absolutely smashed it. An incredible season for Darwin Nunez, who despite still being rated as a three-star ability forward, as an advance forward, he's been going out and scoring goals for fun. 27 goals in 22 Premier League starts, 29 appearances overall, and a 7.46 average match rating. But it was 47 in all comps for him. Salah's got 30 goals for us. But the big news is Virgil van Dijk, who played a little bit less this year only 18 appearances in the Premier League but you will see his contract wherever it shows it just here is expiring in only a month he will be moving on I tried to offer him a deal but what he wanted to be at the club at the age he's at he's starting to decline as well I just didn't think it was worth it. I feel like we need to start building for the future if we want to be successful continually. We need to make sure there's always new blood coming into the team. So that's what we're going to do. Van Dijk is going out the door. Fair play to him. He's been a great servant to Liverpool, but the time is up on his Liverpool career. And this summer, we need to try and figure out if we can trust the players we've got or whether we need to replace him. So it's time for season four's transfers. And this is the biggest summer yet. We know Van Dijk's already going and some other huge names have left the club. If you are enjoying the video up to this point, please go ahead and smash that like button. But yeah, Yes, Joe Gomez. He is the first player out the door alongside Van Dyke. £32 million to Newcastle. Didn't really play too much for us in the last season. Started seven games. I just didn't really think he was the man that we wanted at the back anymore. And we have signed, in my opinion, a way better centre-back than him anyway. So Gomez is gone. But the biggest news is Mo Salah also leaving at the same time Van Dyke does. I mentioned I offered him a new contract. He accepted it. He had an extra two years. So last year was one of his years. And now he was going again into the final year of his contract where I figured, you know what, it's probably about time to cash in on him. He was good for us last year, as he always has been, exceptional for us, in fact. But it was either let him go for free at the end of the season or sell him on. So I decided... We're going to try and get some money in. We've sold him to Real Madrid for £46 million, potential to be £53 million. Maybe it will be a bad decision, but the man's already got to the point where he's retiring from internationals. He's 33, probably got another couple of years before he really starts to decline. And I feel like we've got to the point where we can try and replace him or at least give opportunities to younger players to take up their minutes. So Salah and Van Dijk, great servants at Liverpool, but it's time to build a new era really at the club. But I think our replacements for these players have been absolutely exceptional. Van Dyke's replacement, it's basically his regen. It's Matthias de Litt, the player who was, of course, not too impressive at Juventus when he went there from Ajax, but has done well for Bayern in this simulation. On top of that, he's a leader on an international front as well, the captain of his national side, 18 leadership, and he's going to come in and take up those Virgil van Dyke minutes at the back. He is going to be the leader alongside Scalvini, a young centre-back partnership for the future with Canate floating around with the Caber as well we have got some great sense back options it was a lot of money at 97 million pounds but I think it's going to be worth it I think he's the kind of player that we needed in our team and he is going to be the one to lead this new era Liverpool side or will he because we also have another player joining from Bayern Munich our Salah replacement if you will not exactly the same kind of player nor do they even play the same side but if we're talking about star quality in those wide areas we have definitely got that signing one of the most elite talents in the world Jamal Musalia the German international from Bayern Munich for his £80 million release clause, which is a bargain, really. After three great seasons for them, he is destined for the top. A five-star ability player, apparently, according to our coaches. Great traits, great attributes, 20 dribbling, 17 first touch. This man is an unbelievable player, and he's got so many years left ahead of him yet. If all goes well here, he's going to go down as a Liverpool legend. So we've raided Bayern Munich for two of their best players, sent on near enough £200 million for the combined total of them both. But I really do think it's going to up 
level our team as well as lowering the age of those star players. That way we can have this era of dominance continue and it's not just going to be once Salah and Van Dijk go, it's over. No, we have replaced them and I think replaced them very well. And why not add another star talent to the mix? 22-year-old midfielder Xavi Simmons has also came in for £40 million from PSG. Wasn't getting too much game time there but comes into our midfield as an option. He's not going to start every single game but he is someone that will take up some minutes. He's got potential to get better as well and for the kind of player we're getting here I don't feel like 40 million is the biggest fee in the world transfer listed by PSG so he comes into our squad and this is now our best team it's starting to be a little less recognizable than the team you might know from real life still Trent, Allison, and Robbo in there but De Litt and Scalvini are now our ideal centre-back partnership Chiuameni and Musalia with Harvey Elliott, Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes Florentino Luis also in there you've got Brandon Soppi on the bench Rumi Baji who's been very good since coming in this was his first season at Liverpool six starts 21 bench appearances four goals and seven assists he's starting to come into his own at the age of 19 hopefully he can start to fill Salah's boots Harvey Elliott will also try and do the same I'm sure he might go down as a Liverpool legend at this rate but that's our team ready for season four one more season after this but let's see how we get on this year and at this point the Premier League might as well just be named Liverpool's lead because we've won it again 93 points this year four points clear of Man City I feel like that's our best points total so far potentially we have done it yet again Premier League winners three years in a row but the big news no not the Community Shield win it is the Champions League win we finally got it beating Real Madrid we've knocked us out a few years in a row I feel we beat them 2-1 in the final also knocking out Porto in the semis to get there in a 5-1 aggregate win and it was Ben Doak scoring in the 94th minute Ben Doak of all people the 20 year old bought him from Celtic been part of a Liverpool academy for a few years had a few first team opportunities this year and he took it well scoring in the 94th minute of a Champions League final to make himself a Liverpool hero against Real Madrid and it was a great year yet again for Darwin Nunez Gakpo not playing as much but doing well Jamal Musalia pretty much started every game for the club and was exceptional this year 19 goals and 9 assists an incredible player to have in our team Rooney Bargy as well scoring 15 goals in all comps 10 assists in the Prem in 34 appearances a very good second season for him again though we have a little bit of a problem for the future kind of situation where next season Robertson is not going to be here anymore it was his last season as a Liverpool player maybe we'll give the game time to Parisi maybe we'll try and find a replacement but it is a lot of that known Liverpool core that have now left is within this five years he's not going to extend his deal so we'll see where he ends up he's got some interest from Atletico Madrid so hopefully he goes and enjoys his career there but this is the last we'll see of Robbo and also Castello Luqueba whose contract was expiring never really developed too much and he is off to Borussia Dortmund at the end of his deal after a few decent years for us it's season five transfers now and a big sale kicks us off with Diogo Jota going over to Arsenal for 60 million pounds he's done well for us over the years but it's time for him to move on after only 13 starts starts last year off he goes to Arsenal a potential rival but 60 million is a great deal for a 29 year old and Curtis Jones has gone off to Napoli a good player who I think in real life will be great for Liverpool next year but in this world he just never really kicked on too much was getting less and less game time particularly after Xavi Simmons came in so he's decided to move on for about 20 mil to Napoli we've decided to try and future proof our goalkeeping position by signing an up and coming goalkeeper to play behind Allison for the next years or so before he eventually leaves leaves the club and it is Thomas Gaitan a new gen goalkeeper from Boca Juniors we only spent six million pounds on him but he's valued at about 80 which goes to show you just how good he might be a phenomenal goalkeeper and hopefully that future proofs us once Allison goes we still needed some extra attacking depth with Jota leaving so we've decided to pick up Evan Nilsson here he's going to deputize for Darwin Nunez up top 48 million pounds for the Porto player who's been scoring goals for fun over the years surprised he's only got 10 Brazil caps because clearly he is a very talented player 26 years of age he is going to be up there as one of our best striking options and apparently actually comes in as our best we'll see whether that's the case this year though and then the raid of Bayern Munich continues we've had Musalia we've had Matthias De Ligt and now we have signed Alfonso Davis I don't know how we're pulling off these deals but he had a release clause the Canadian comes in from Bayern for 82 million pounds hasn't been as good as some of the other players we've been looking at but as far as a replacement for Andy Robertson goes we have got exactly what we want here I think he is going to be a star for us and all of these players that we've been bringing in are huge names it's been saying that we're selling loads of shirts because of the signs that we've made and our best 11 is now phenomenal really I mean it's Allison, Trent, Scalvini, De Litt and Davis at the back 
What a backline that is. Probably the best in the world by a long distance. Chouameni, Harvey Elliott and Florentino Luis in the midfield with Jamal Musalia, Luis Diaz and also Evan Nilsson with some great players on the bench too. Jobber's who we didn't talk about much. He's been here from the start playing a bit of football here and there but never really kicking on too much. Brandon Soppy, again another one that we signed at the start. He's had plenty of interest over the years and has played quite a lot of football in that right back spot. We've got loads of great players but this is our best team and for our final season let's see can we win a second Champions League can we win a what fourth Premier League title maybe an FA Cup let's see how we do in our final season I think it's safe to say we have navigated this tricky period for Liverpool very very well and it's been a great year a Super Cup win and another Premier League win that's four in a row one of the most dominant periods in Premier League history for any team Liverpool winning another title Man City really falling off this year 17 points behind us on only 71 points the biggest disappointment though is we were very very close to another Champions League but we have lost to Leipzig I mean I don't want to judge too much but that looks like a winnable final no we knocked out Arsenal to get there we knocked out Fiorentina Juve not the hardest run that's about as easy of a run to a Champions League you could have asked for and not the hardest final in the world either but Leipzig have beat us Danny Olmo and Andre Silva getting the goals a little bit disappointing, a little bit gutting to not win that extra Champions League. But you know what? As far as the rebuild goes, we've got to be happy, right? We have built a star-studded team. We're a five-star reputation club. We've got great players all around. Darwin Nunes is a bigger legend than Bill Shankly, Jurgen Klopp, and is only behind Steven Gerrard now. If he keeps it up, Darwin is going to go down as the biggest legend in Liverpool history, which I don't think many people would have ever predicted for him. Definitely the most successful rebuild we've ever done. Arguably one of the easiest too, but I felt like it was about time we did a club like like this who are having a potentially difficult transfer window to navigate in real life but let me know in the comments who you want to see next we'll go for a harder one next time if you did enjoy smash the like button but most of all have a great day, everybody and i'll see you next time thank you and goodbye